Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone, or good morning now. We're usually in the afternoon. I think it's 11.35. Good morning, everyone. Um, just got back off the road. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, recruits on campus uh, starting today, and then uh, it'll be fun because we get back with our players um, starting tomorrow with practice. That you know, uh, Tomorrow, Saturday, we get our, uh, another practice. Then it kind of leads us in for the next week. Um, before we leave a week from Saturday to head to Orlando. So let's tack a couple things. One, um, let's talk about the, the, the roster and the transfer portal. Um, as we all know, it's a changing time in, in athletics, not it, not just football. It's happening in a lot of sports, and it's happening um, to a lot of institutions. And, and um, we got hit with a, a number of kids uh, that have entered the transfer portal and that have left. And a um, couple things I'll say. One, um, some of this is getting an opportunity to move closer to home. Some of this is an opportunity to play more, um, opportunity to have more more chances to get on the field. Um, and uh, we're really honest with our players about where they're at, and we want the best for our guys. I I've told you guys since the day I got here, football is football. Uh, it's my why my kid's playing at Kansas Wesleyan, not at Kansas State. Um, and we got a lot of players that are way better than my son, but they want an opportunity to go play somewhere. Um, and so that's part of it. And then some of it for sure is um, kids finding representation and then uh, um, seeing what's out there from a name, image, and likeness standpoint. And what, uh, what I know that Kansas State is doing, what we're doing from an athletic department is continuing to improve and enhance uh, our name, image, and likeness. Uh, we've had some really good conversations even over the last few weeks, uh, and people have had some over the last few months, uh, and I'm excited about uh, the trajectory we were on to improve that landscape of name, image, and likeness. But for me, what is really important with regards to that is, for starters, I'm a, I'm, I think it's a positive thing for our student-athletes. It's a positive thing for, for Kansas State on name, image, and likeness. But I want to make sure that the players know it's real and it's not a, an empty promise. And so that's where I think we've been really diligent to make sure that if we're going to sit in front of a, a family and say we have something for you, that we're going to be able to come through. And I, I know that there's some unkept promises, and that's what I feel bad for for some of the student athletes um, across the country is – uh, maybe a number was said and it didn't come through. And I'm not going to sit and tell a family that we're going to try to help them with a lot of our great businesses in in Manhattan, in the state of Kansas, and people that want to support us uh, if we know that number's not real. And so um, we're moving in a really good trajectory on having a lot of real numbers that we can compete um, and compete well. Uh, to make sure kids want to stay and play for Kansas State. Um, I know that, that our culture has been mentioned. Is it still sound? Is it stable? Uh, it's really strong. Has it been um, battered and hit? You bet. So is everybody's in the country. Um, but it's driven on people. It's driven on, you know, for, for us, it starts on our first floor. You know, we've got a tremendous strength staff uh, led by Tremaine Carroll that have been developing guys and, and uh, been here with me uh, for a number of years now. And he and his staff love those kids, challenge those kids, make them the best version of themselves. Uh, Scott Troush and Nutrition does a phenomenal job of continuing to develop guys and continuing to give kids the, um, the right information and education to continue to put great lean muscle mass on. Uh, Mindy Hoffman and the, and the athletic training staff who do a phenomenal job with recovery, phenomenal job um, keeping our athletes healthy and safe, phenomenal job all everybody down there of building relationships with players. Um, and so uh, our, our culture is strong. Um, has taken a couple of, of body blows, but um, it, it's going to stand the test of time because of the great kids we have in that locker room and the great coaches that are great role models and mentors for these kids. So um, I don't know if the the landscape is going to change much. We'll find out at the next next few legislative sessions. Um, but that's that's where we're at in the landscape of of transfer portal, name, image, likeness, those things. And I'm, I think we're going to keep moving in a positive direction at Kansas State. I'm really confident we are because we've already done some really good things. On to the bowl game quickly. 
Um, Connor Riley will be the interim offensive coordinator and will call the offense. Uh, he did, you know, kind of led the group last weekend on Saturday and Sunday, and I was excited for Riles' opportunity. I'm not going to uh, do anything with any of those positions until after the bowl game. I need to process some things. I need to have some conversations. Um, but uh, we're, we're, we're not going to change everything we're doing offensively. We're, we've had too much success in 21, 22, 23 uh, for us to say we're going to make wholesale changes. But uh, uh, we're going to make some adjustments and, and uh, continue to evolve, just like we're going to do on defense uh, as well as we evaluate every year. But uh, that stuff with coaches and stuff will take place sometime after the bowl game. So with that being said, there's probably no questions. I appreciate it. Everybody have a great Christmas. We'll see you in Orlando. Uh, you talked about, uh, Connor, with the offense. What about the, who's going to work with the quarterbacks? Uh, it's a collective group of us that, that are doing it. Um, and uh, Josh will, Buford will, will work with those guys. Um, uh, I like getting a chance to visit with them and meet with them and talk with them. Um, we've, you know, we've got a great staff up there offensively um, with all the guys. I mean, BA's been here with me all five years. Riles has been with me all five years. LaPac's been with us for a handful of years. Middleton's uh, new but really fits in well with our group. So uh, it's going to be a collective group. And uh, Jacob Knuth, has he been? Have you we're we're going to be fine with Jacob. Um, he'll back up uh, Avery, and uh, if he has to go in the game, we'll be fine. Yeah. With with all the transfer portal stuff, is the biggest concern probably depth, maybe special teams? Is it that where it kind of you know, um, Arnie? No, I'm kind of excited because we have so many freshmen that even the ones that have played three or four games, this game doesn't count. So we can play those guys, and that was really good to hear for us. That was that was done last summer, um, and we're going to have a lot of kids have a, have some opportunities to play that maybe haven't. But we also have a lot of our core guys still that are going to be on special teams as well. It's been exciting times last twenty four hours for Cooper BB and also wow. for the program. Just what can you say about him? <clears throat> Earned, deserved, and developed. Um, Coop came in here uh, uh, five years ago, four years ago, with aspirations of doing what he's done, and he's and he's done those things. And it's hard work. Um, he's he pushes himself. He's built his body upright. He's watched film. He's worked his technique, and to be a, a two-time consensus All-American and him get a chance to go on the Ring of Honor the next time we have a group that goes in. Um, it's one of the reasons he came back and. Uh, He's earned every one of those um, accolades that he's received. He's so thankful for the players he's played with. He's so thankful for the strength coach, the nutritionist, the athletic trainers, that's so forth. And he's thankful for Coach Riley um, for pushing him like he does and the offensive line crew as a, as a whole. So couldn't be more excited for Coop. As you know, some players that have an immense amount of success at this stage sometimes opt out. How meaningful is it to you that he's going to be at the bowl? Um, it's really important for him. It was really important for that entire offensive line to go out together. They stayed together. They want to go out together. And, you know, that's, you know, to have all those guys uh, not only come back for their fifth or sixth year, whatever it may be, but to say, hey, we're going out together and we're playing in this and having a great time in Orlando. And, and excites me is because we're going to honor these great seniors uh, that are going to play their last game for K-State, but we're also going to get a snapshot into the future of K-State football as well. That was my next question. What I mean, this bowl is a little bit different than last year and some other ones because not just Avery, but so many young guys will be on the field playing essential roles. Yeah, we're excited about that because there's a number of them, and there's a reason every week that we do development, good against good, you know, young against young, whether that's special team, offense, or defense. There was not a week that went by that we didn't pause the practice and say, put the ball down and let's go. All the guys that we would say are red shirting or not in the travel squad, not in the two deep, 
have had reps every week. Uh, typically, we do it on Tuesday and Wednesday. Last Saturday and Sunday, they got most of the reps. We do a lot of special team stuff with those guys. So to answer the question of, boy, a lot of these guys are going to get their first opportunity. Yeah, but they've been prepping for this since August 1st. And so um, there's a lot of veteran guys that are going to play too, and a lot of guys that everybody has heard of and, and have been a part of this uh, for as as long as I've been here. But there's going to be some young guys who are getting an opportunity too. I'm excited for those guys. You open this press conference by talking about the NIL and transfer portal, two things that didn't exist when you took this job just five years ago. How much does the NCAA need to maybe adjust some of the clock here with – recruiting and yeah. transfer portal and bowl prep, all this falling at the same time? We need to um, quickly um, because the calendar's a little bit out of whack right now. Um, you know, hosting high school kids, hosting transfer kids, having a signing period, um, not binding any of the transfers by a signing period. Um, and then, you know, whatever kids from whatever school's enter the portal, whether it's after a championship game, after a bowl game, whatever it may be, and then they have a small window to come in and visit schools again, but you can't go out and see them. It's, it's um, a, a lot of things have to adjust. Uh, we've known this as, as, as an industry and as coaches. We talk about it all the time. Um, I, I wish there were a commissioner of football in college, in, in at least the Power Five. Gosh, I wish there were so we could get all the people together and come to some resolution and come with some great ideas and get coaches in the room with some administrators. It just hasn't happened yet job comes open um uh, finally we're here to talk about the bowl but give me your early thoughts on nc state haven't watched any film yet um i walked in with klanderman and, and standard and they're watching some of, of the film um and they're they're a really talented football team but i haven't got a chance i don't know if dave's probably had a lot of chance at, at nc state to watch us with everything going on either but now's your chance to start diving into it I've got so much respect for Coach Dorn. I've known him for a while. He's done a phenomenal job there. Um, you know, we've visited with their staff defensively in the past, so there's some similarities there. Uh, I know they've they've been really hot towards the end of the season, so I think it's going to be a terrific bowl game. You have to recruit from the transfer portal, junior college prospects, high school prospects. How much time and investment now do you have to use to recruit your own roster during this time period as well? Yeah. Um, but I, I really think that needs to happen all year long. Um, and that's something that we've talked about as a staff and how other, what other ways can we continue to do that? Building relationships is building relationships. You gotta continue to do that uh, day in and day out for the whole year. Um, we're gonna talk about some things that, that once we get to February and, and slow down for our coaches, that maybe we can have some more in-depth conversations more often um, and not maybe season's end, spring ball end, fall end. Maybe it's winter conditioning end. Maybe it's fall camp end. I mean, there's a lot of things that um, um, are thrown at these student athletes too, you know, and some of the things that you might have a conversation with them about early in the season might be different later in the season based on injuries, based on we plan on red shirt and, you know, all of a sudden, boom, you got to play. Um, there, there's so many things that um, we need to continue to – get out of our comfort zone as coaches and find more unique ways to um, visit with these guys throughout the season about the tough issues, not just about game plans. we got to talk about more of the tougher issues, and uh, I think everybody's got to do that. I, I know what happens in men's basketball because I saw that last May with everybody or April when, when that was a revolving door with a lot of kids leaving and I and it didn't. We have, I don't know, you guys know better than I do, uh, the amount we had last year in totality compared to the amount they have this year, it just came all at once because of the recruiting calendar. You know, just like, boom, that had to happen right then. And a lot of people are dealing with the same. I, I, guys, when you talk about all those things, I'm on the phone with coaches all day long too with my peers of, you know, what things that they're doing, um, how, how are they handling some stuff too. And we got to get – all of our heads together and see um, how we can continue to uh, make it better for these guys. Something everyone else also goes through is sometimes you you are surprised by a kid or two entering the portal. How tough does that make roster management in this crunch, and do you almost have to scramble because of it? 
Yes, you're always going to be surprised by a couple. Um, I think everybody's going to have that. But um, uh, in, in the respect of scrambling, that's where I think Fitz asked. It's hard because you feel like you have to be in a scramble because the, the window is so short. That's why kids get in when they do, so they can go visit a couple places. But the challenge is, as you scramble, you might make a mistake. And, and that's something that, you know, we're – trying to go visit people we're trying to contact high schools we're trying to contact parents we're trying to contact everybody we can so that we add positive influences influences to that locker room and not negative influences because um, it's still their team and they got to make sure that they fit and that's why it's important on these visits that they get around our players coach i think i know how you'll answer this or handle this but from the end of the iowa state game to now would you use the word frustrating? I mean, you're very positive, but um, is that the challenging right word? more than frustrating? I mean, guys, this is this is college athletics, and sometimes I get the I get the feeling because I am hard on myself. Um, I wear my emotions on my sleeve an awful lot that this is only happening in Kansas State football because that's my world. But I also know it's happening. A lot of other places but I, I care about these kids I care about their parents I care about the program uh, I care about the kids that are here in the locker room and what they're thinking and and what they're going through and then all of a sudden see you you're on the road and you can't stop and say hey br I brought everybody back in uh, and got off the road uh, when CK left and had that opportunity to visit with them and I thought it was a really good conversation then you're back on the road again that's where the calendar, we've got to get some things back in order so that the number one goal is to keep your guys that are here and keep them here for the long haul, keep them here for four or five years. I don't think there's any kid that goes to a school and says, well, I'll give it a shot. If I'm there a year, if I'm there two years, I'll give it a shot. And if not, I can go to the next school. I hope that's not what's going on because um, that's not good for college athletics. And I, I know that it's not one person that keeps a player here. It's a collective group, and that's where we have these optimal performance meetings where I meet with everybody that runs departments from strength, nutrition, athletic training, um, operations and stuff of what more better things we can do to keep our current guys happy, keep them here, keep challenging them, but we got to keep loving them too. So I'm saying more frustrating, not disappointing, you know. Would you identify if there were one or two that did surprise you? Uh, I'm not going to talk about any names, no. Will Connor stay down or will he be up? And if he, either way, why? Um, I don't know. I've been on the road. You know, I, I mean, those are things that we need to have a conversation as a staff because I sure as heck wouldn't want Connor Riley to hear that in a press conference. And Riles and I have not had a conversation. We've been on the road recruiting together, and we uh, for a day. I think I've been with him. Yeah, I was with him for a day. But I, I mean, I don't. Hey, Riles. By the way, I told these guys here's what we're gonna do. They blame Walters. Um, it's a lot of well, I blame you for some stuff too. But that's more uh, different industry. <laughs> so I, the conversations that we've got to have happen. After this weekend, after we get the recruits out and we can kind of catch our breath and work with our current team. With Connor, are you treating this as an audition for the full-time job, kind of like you did? Yeah, I have to. Absolutely, I have to. What do you think it is about him that makes him – that could make him a good offensive coordinator? Um, I, I sit in the offense and defensive room pretty equally split. And – I think the misnomer out there that people have is the offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator makes every decision with with little input, and everybody just kind of delegates with with the coordinators. The conversations that go in and go on in both rooms, there's a lot of guys in both rooms, and I think Clanton would tell you this, and I think CK would tell you this that could that could call a game. Um, so there's tons of conversations that I hear. Great banter back and forth, getting game plans for both offense and defense. And Connor's been around me the longest, um, dating back to our days as assistants together. And uh, I, I feel it's his opportunity um, to.
to be out in front of the guys because he's out in front of the guys anyway from an O-line run game standpoint. Um, now I'm excited for him uh, to get out in front of the group uh, as a leader for, for this two weeks. What would you say most excites you about the idea of watching Avery Johnson play an entire game? Um, probably the preparation. And it's interesting, you know, you're like, well, what about the game, Coach? No, the preparation where you're the guy and – we get to go through all the things that you like. You know, what, what things in the, in the pass game do you like? What things in, in the run game do you like? Um, and let him have some say and let him see, see the game and say, well, this concept, I, th this kid is, is a sponge and he loves watching football. The kid is a junkie. And that's what's going to make him really, really special here is he is a junkie. And he already is special, guys. We know that. But the fact that He's going to be able to come and say, I like this, I like this. These are concepts I feel comfortable with. Um, and so I, I'm looking forward to the preparation over the next, what is it, two weeks now before our game um, as he continues to evolve. And I'm excited about our conversations that we're going to have from my vantage point as a defensive guy to see what he's seeing and see how I can help him as well. But the kids, the stage isn't going to be too big. We all know that. This kid's confident and he's going to be ready to, to sling it around. I also just wanted to check. Um, are you expecting any other sit-outs other than Ben or, or Phillip? You know, I, I, I don't think that we will. I, I really don't. Um, once again, talk about surprises, right? You know, I, 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 knew, a, I knew a couple of them were because they, they have contacted me. And I, I so appreciate guys that – have done it the right way to contact me. Coach, can we can we talk? I just want to talk about where I'm at with this process on the bowl game. Great. And uh, I've had some good conversations with um, a couple of those guys, you know, the Bens and the Phils and, and stuff. I, we've had good conversations. And, and I'm going to support our guys because um, many of those kids I brought here and told their families, families that uh, I would support them and help them. And uh, um, those are the conversations we're having, but I don't see any more. This may be a little bit odd, but I want to go back to that commissioner thought. Have you and you talked about some of your colleagues? Is that something that you think is possible? Is it something that you've talked to those guys about? I don't know, guys. If it's possible, I, I, I mean, we're we're all over the map right now, and um, you know, we've got. I think we've got really good commissioners of our conferences. I know the one, and I think Brett is phenomenal. But I know Brett knows that we're we're having some frustrations as coaches, um, and frustrations uh, overall with, with with college athletics and with college football. Uh, more from like Fitz was saying, calendar and does it all match up? And how can we make this a little bit more seamless? Even though it's it's never going to be seamless. Um, those are probably more questions for Gene because he's in on way more meetings than I am. Um, but Think of how much has changed since I got here. Forget transfer portal name image like this. Conference realignment. Think how much has changed since I since I got here. I can't imagine what's going to still happen in the next three to five years. And I think we're just scratching the surface of what's going to happen. With what you said, does that impact how long you want to do this? Why are you asking so many questions? I mean, for crying out loud. People are going to think I'm really mad at him, though, now, Fitz. <laughs> so, no, I'm not mad at Matt Walters. Um, I love doing what I'm doing. Um, I have the greatest boss. And everybody knows he's a dear friend of mine, but he's a great boss. And I love the kids that we have the opportunity to go and, and coach. And my favorite time is going out on that practice field and coaching and having a blast with those guys. There's a lot of things that are frustrating that everybody's dealing with. Coaches, players, support, everybody's dealing with. We need to see what happens over the next couple of years, and I think we're going to get some improvements for sure. Because everybody knows there's some issues in, in college athletics. We can get some improvements. Okay, this one won't rub you wrong. Oh, boy. Is the fact that it's Orlando for the first time, does that help in terms of mindset? It's not a been there, done that bowl? Um, I'm excited about Orlando. I, I, I learned first time K-State's ever been in Florida for a bowl game, correct? That's pretty cool. I, because of the bowl games that I've been to, it's the first time we've left before Christmas. You know, that's a challenge in itself. 
Um, the fact that we're not flying guys to the bowl site, the fact that we're all flying here out of Manhattan together, and then after the bowl game they go. We, Casey Feldkamp does a phenomenal job. She's the best in the business as at organizing activities and organizing a, a detailed itinerary with a lot of great things for our guys, and the Bulls done a great job. They've worked together to give our kids a great experience. And so I, I going to be good weather, um, going to be an opportunity to be in, in Orlando um, with your brothers, some of it one last time with these seniors. And we're, we're going to have a lot of fun, but we're going to compete too. Uh, with Coach Riley, does it – the fact that he's going to be splitting – some more time. Does it help to have such a veteran offensive line? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, um, and uh, those those guys could probably run all the drills themselves and probably would enjoy it. They wouldn't get yelled at. Um, they would just run through the drills. But uh, no, it's it's it helps for sure. You know, and granted, he can still do a lot. Of, there's a lot of offensive coordinators that have that have called it from the O line as well. Um, and we'll talk about all that stuff at the end of January, but that's how we're operating it right now, or at the sometime in January after the bowl. And yeah, that's a big, big piece to it. And I don't know, I don't know why it changed. You know, last year we had more after the Sugar Bowl. You know, um, but I, I think still that is more the landscape of college football of get in now why you can go visit places and you know some of the conversations that we had with guys they're finding scholarships and having opportunities to go play and that's the most important thing for me is those kids that are leaving I, I, many of those kids I recruited here it's not like I all of a sudden can't stand the kid because he's leaving that's not fair um, they're 18 to 21 year olds I mean if there's a better opportunity for for a young man to get on the field and have a great experience this game only lasts so long and and we've had a lot of coaches help some of these guys find some spots and I think that's important for everybody to know as well that we care about these kids and I would say a lot of the kids um, that you could reach out to I think deep down uh, appreciate what um, the sports staff, the coaching staff, uh, have meant to them for the years they've been here. Haven't been around here. You know, I've been on the road, but I was just super impressed on Saturday and Sunday last week at practice. Um, and, you know, those older offensive linemen respect and trust him and uh, believe in him. And I sure believe in him. Uh, are you guys fairly healthy going into the – I'll have to find that out, Arnie. I don't know. <laughs> I, I I believe so, but I'm not sure. Signing day, I can tell you a little bit about practice, but maybe let's honor the kids that sign. This I knew this was going to be fun, Fitz, because there's just so much that I don't even know. Uh, but I think we are. <laughs> you know who we're playing, right? Yeah, we're playing NC State. I just haven't watched very much. I know it. CK leaves. I'm sure you talked immediately with Avery. Did he give you any hesitation about not being 100% locked in? He's he's here. He's with us. He's excited uh, about this game, and he's excited about the future and leading this program. Backup running back. Got a lot of opportunities there. Got some really good young players. Um and uh, let's let that competition – I don't want to name one guy and forget one guy. There's a lot of good competition there um, behind DJ that uh, um, they're going to get some snaps. They're going to get some opportunities. I don't want to ask exactly what you said because I'm sure it was a private conversation. But but as emotional as getting him to say the first time was, but what was your message to call him whenever he said, hey, I'm, I'm going to keep that between CK and I. <laughs> 